Coming in at $999, Predator finally releases a new generator that is now 5,000 starting watts, dual fuel, and has a ton of cool upgrades that I think you guys are going to like. The new Predator 5000 is a dual fuel generator that comes with 5,000 starting watts, 3,900 running on gas, or 3,600 running on propane. The new set of wheels and hard rubber tires are a definite upgrade, not to mention they also changed the lock assembly. This is still a hardened plastic, but at least it doesn't have the annoying rattle that the older 3500 model did, which we'll see how long this actually holds up. The new Predator also has side panels that doesn't need tools to take them off. They just have thumb screws on each side making servicing even easier and quicker. They also added anodized aluminum black handles, which these not only look cool, but they also provide a good grip for when lifting it, although it is heavy. The new generator also has a telescoping handle built in underneath, and now with the wheels and the handle, this makes it much more portable, so now you can easily take it and show it off to all of your friends. On the front panel of the generator, it now comes with a main engine battery switch, also a couple of breakers, and now has added an RV 30 amp travel trailer plug, which will be great for the RV community. It also has a pair of 20 amp plugs as well, along with electric start and remote start, which by pushing this twice, this will fire up the generator. It also has USB ports, which they also included USB-C as well. There is also a 12 volt DC charging, which with the cable included, this allows you to charge up batteries. They also have the overload reset, so that way you don't have to turn the generator off. Parallel port, so you can combine this with another. Eco throttle, also a quick connect for the propane adapter, which this just snaps in by pressing it up against it, and then you pull on the collar to slide it back. A new selector switch has also been added so you can quickly switch between propane or gasoline and they decided to keep the same display as the last one which hopefully this doesn't go out prematurely like a few of them did. They also decided to keep the same pull cord and backing plate along with a little ring to help prevent fraying. The generator will also come with a mechanical fuel gauge. Even though it's not digital, it still works fine. It also has a new style fuel cap along with filler neck, but the red ring is still in there to indicate not to overfill your generator as this can cause hard starting problems later on down the road. The generator also comes with a lot of extras like your remote key fob, a manual. It also comes with a small toolkit along with your charging cables for DC like batteries and more. It'll also include an oil funnel, but one of the best things is they include three jet kits. This allows you to go from sea level all the way up to 7,000 feet, so you can always have the right jet with you, and this is something you don't see with other generators. The propane regulator and hose is also included, which I do like the external regulator because hooking up to an RV is much easier this way. As we take a look at the engine and pull off the side panels, each panel has added foam on the back to help with sound dampening. And there is a battery cable you will have to connect, which this is fairly simple. Now, one thing to take note is the ease of access to everything. Your starter is right there, so if you ever have to service or replace, your battery is also easily accessible, which this is a lead-acid non-spillable. A lithium battery really would have been nice to top it off. They also included an oil fill and a separate oil drain. Now, I think I may have liked a tube better, but they did include this little spillway for the oil, so now you just put a little pan underneath, open the oil plug, and let it drain out into it, which it's not a bad idea, but I think I might have liked the drain too better. Now before adding oil, take note of how much oil might be in it. That way you don't overfill these. Sometimes it will have about a third or maybe a quarter of the oil. So when you do add your oil, you won't make a mess. Now this takes about 20 ounces of oil to fill it up of 10W30. Now one thing you want to take note is don't pour this in fast. If you do, you can easily make a mess. I tend to pour in a little bit at a time, and if you noticed, I still have some extra and the generator is already full. This is why you don't want to just dump it all in at once. As we take a look at the other side of the generator, this side panel also have sound dampening foam as well. But one of the nice things is that you don't need any tools to service the air box. There's just a thumb screw as well. And you also have a manual choke. This isn't included on every generator. That way, if your battery is dead, you can easily pop off the side panel, put the choke into the closed position, fire up the generator, and then open the choke back up. This is one benefit I do like about this unit. And also getting to the spark plug is easy. This unit also will have a charcoal canister included for emissions purposes, which these can cause some problems, especially if you overfill the generator, but overall the ease of maintenance on this is very nice. 
and they also included some information like how much oil, the type of oil on the back of the unit just underneath the muffler. This generator will weigh in at 109 pounds and that's with oil only and no fuel. Now when adding fuel to your generators or outdoor power equipment, it's always a good idea to add a fuel conditioner or fuel stabilizer. That way if you forget to treat the fuel, it's already been treated. That way during storage, it won't crystallize in the carburetor. And if you're looking for a good gas can, these ones from SureCan are easy to use, they don't spill, and they're quality made in the USA. Okay, so first time firing up the generator, we'll turn on the battery switch, make sure the eco is off, and put it into the gasoline setting. Now I'm going to pull on the generator cord slowly because these are always stiff the first pull. This will help bring some fuel into the carburetor and also help circulate a little bit of the oil on the... Oh wow. Well, never mind. This just fired right up real easy. That's actually kind of unusual. While we're here, we'll take a look at the display. Right now it's showing 125 volts and we'll scroll through. Zero amps. This will be our volt amps or watts. Also our hours and runtime and back to volts. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the eco throttle. That way it'll quiet down a little bit. And we'll take a walk around. But in case you're wondering, that wheel that vibrates and makes noise, this one here seems pretty quiet. So far looks good. I do hear a little rattle, which I bet it's the handle. Overall though, sounding great. Nice and quiet. We'll do a sound check here in a moment. And back to that little rattle, which it's always the handle, so I'm betting that's what it is. And just to show you, and again, it's the handle, which it's common for all of them. We'll just shove a rag in there for now. That'll fix it temporarily, but I'll have to figure out a fix for that later. That way it doesn't rattle. Okay, and from that mark, at 23 feet away, I've done a lot of generators from this exact spot. So we'll see what it looks like. Okay, no load and on concrete, which is always going to be louder. And this is coming in at 60, under 60. So that's actually really good for this size of generator. Okay, now we're going to do the quarter load test. And so this is going to be using the hair dryer over there. And at 23 feet away is how they measure it with a quarter load. Now this should be closer to 975 watts, but I'll do another one in a second. But this will still give us some good information. And now at a quarter load, coming in just about a good solid decibel higher, maybe 1.5, so that's not bad. Okay, so this is a different sound check with a 1500 watt load. This is kind of represent a 15K AC unit like on an RV trailer. So you can see we're pulling about 1500 watts, which is about what they'll pull with no other loads. And so this will give you an idea of how loud this will be if you have it hooked up to an RV trailer running one AC unit. All right, now at a 1500 watt load, just about the same. Okay, I wanted to show you one more sound test in case you see other people doing sound checks. And this is the same thing, a 1500 watt load, but this time we have it on this gravel and some grass. And so now look at the difference in case you see other people do this. Gives you an idea that concrete will always be the loudest, but other items will absorb sound if you happen to have it on grass or rocks. Okay, before we get to the rest of the testing, there's some cool things I actually want to show you about this. More from kind of like a customer base or even more of a mechanic standpoint because they thought of things that if you are going to work on this, this is what I like from being more of a mechanic side, is that they made a lot of things easy. They thought about it. And so maintenance, not to mention small repairs or small fixes are actually easy. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, on this generator, they did add an actual storage or fuel shutoff. So now this will shut the fuel off to the carburetor and this will allow it to drain. And if you're already adding that fuel conditioner, now if you don't get it all out, you won't have to worry about it crystallizing. Now for very long term storage, it's best to still use the drain screw. But this is just a nice feature that they added. So you can just put it here, let it run for three or four minutes and then it'll shut off after the fuel is run out of the carburetor. Okay, so one of the cool things, again, easy to get to the spark plug and air filter, but look at this. This little black thing down here on the carburetor, 
that little flat part, not the screw looking thing, that's your low speed jet. This can easily become plugged, but because it's facing you, this is easy to fix. You only need a small Phillips screwdriver to remove that screw and then pull out that little jet and clean it with a wire. And I even have a video to show you how to do this. This would take five minutes on this generator. I'll even leave a link in the description so you can find it. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of a load test on this and I'm gonna throw a bunch of information up here on the screen so you guys can kind of see it happen as we go. I'm gonna have this plugged in my power watchdog. This will help give us some information. It also helps protect your RV. If you guys haven't seen these, these are low voltage protection, also high voltage protection. It's like all in one, plus it gives you a whole bunch of information. So if you're curious about it, I'll leave a link down below. But other than that, let's get this fired up and then uh, show you everything that's going on. Now I do have almost an hour now onto the generator. I did some heat cycles to break it in. And so now it's pretty much ready to go. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is take a look at this, which this is our pure sine wave. So what we wanna watch is if this thing gets jaggy at all, that's gonna mean that the power that's coming out is dirty, but so far it looks great. And this is at 60 Hertz, nice pure sine wave. Everything is symmetrical. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on our AC unit now. And this should draw about 1500 Watts. And wow. Kind of an interesting sound. It didn't do that on my little pre-test I did real quick, but hey, that's a live video for you. But you can see on the left side how many watts we're pulling and drawing almost 13 amps, give or take. We'll let this settle down for just a second. And also turn on the converter. This is what charges your batteries. This can draw anywhere from 50 to maybe 300 watts, depending on how much it has to charge your batteries. But I usually have solar taking care of that. And looking at the sine wave again, everything does look nice and clean. And no jagged edges at all, so let's go ahead and move on. Now we're gonna turn on this AC unit, and both of these do have soft starts. The other one is a 15K, this is a 13.5, so we'll turn this on, and we'll go back and look at that waveform real quick before this kicks all the way up. So we'll go back over to the machine over there, take a look at this scope. And as we take a look, it fires up, didn't even move, didn't budge it at all. So, so far the inverter is doing very good on this, keeping our sine wave and our power nice and clean. And don't worry about that little beeping, that's actually the microwave. But speaking of that, let's go ahead and utilize that next. So we'll come over here and if you look, we're using about 2,500 watts so far and we're only allowed 3,900 and so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on, which will pull about another 1500, so we'll overload it. And we're only allowed 32.5 amps, so this should put us right about there, maybe even a little over. And on we go. And now you can see it going up. Overload light is kicking on. And yeah, if you look at our amps combined, we're a little over 33 which is more than allowed. So that overload light is showing us that we are drawing too much power using about 38, 3900 watts right on the money. Voltage still looks great though. And shutdown. So overall, this thing is handling everything I've thrown at it just fine, so. Okay, and if you're curious if it'll start with a remote start and propane, we'll find out. But one thing you do want to do before uh, with any new propane connection is definitely either get your spray bottle, check it out, or you can buy one of these little pins. These are about $25. I keep this in my RV and it's literally just a sniffer. You just put it up like this against every little connection. And then this will at least give you an idea if there's a leak anywhere. So these are always good ideas uh, to check this stuff. So I keep this everywhere and, and sometimes you know you're at the RV park or somewhere else and somebody has a leak. Well, that's what this is for. So. And let's just see if it does the two times. And although sometimes I think it does a third, but oh, oh there it goes, okay. Well, and there we go. Now overall, the new Predator did a great job. There were so many things about this generator that they improved upon from the 3500 to make a really good 5,000 watt unit, at least starting. 
And the fact that they made this generator really easy to service, that is one of the things I really like about this. You can get to all the main key components, also taking care of carburetor issues. That's also a big plus, at least for me. Um, so overall, I mean, it's hard not to find anything that I don't like about this unit, except for maybe the weight. It is pretty big, it is pretty heavy, but overall it's built pretty tough. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. I hope you liked the video. Make sure to subscribe and I hope to see you next time.